So by this point, you have mastered absolute value equations. Now time to talk about absolute value inequalities. Uh, just a bit of terminology first. When I'm talking about the sign, I'm talking about positive or negative. When I'm talking about the symbol, I'm talking about less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. In that way, I can discuss both of these things, and we just don't have some confusion. So remember, sign, positive or negative, symbol, inequality symbols with less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. All right, let's take a look. We're going to be solving absolute value inequalities now. And they're going to have multiple answers, like absolute value equations, but they're going to have a heck of a lot more answers, as we're going to see. Just to demonstrate, let's try plugging some points in. So, I need in here number one, a number that I plug in and it makes it greater than five. Well, I can plug in six, because the absolute value of six is greater than five. I can plug in seven, I can plug in eight, I can plug in nine. All of these, if I plug them in, well, it'll just make them positive, and they're greater than five. But if all these numbers work, their negative counterparts also work. That's weird looking. And it's easy to look at this stuff, or easier, to look at it on a graph, a number line, if you will. So I'm going to put 0 here, 5 here, negative 5 here. Well, we know from our first part here that all these positive numbers are making it true. That's going to be over here. We know from this part, all these negative numbers are making a true. We're going to put it over there. Now, how we would write it, and you might remember this from solving absolute value, excuse me, solving inequalities way long ago. So I'm just going to shade it in with arrows. Here and here. Now, at 5, because the equation up here is greater than 5, but it's not or equal to, I'm going to put a big old open circle. That just shows that I can get close to 5, but I can't touch 5. And we can write this out by saying x has to be less than negative 5, or x has to be greater than positive 5. And you'll notice a few things here. These signs are opposite. They have flipped. But this is also negative, and that's also positive. They've also flipped. So that leads us to this idea with our steps. Don't worry about that second example. The first step is the same. We're isolating the absolute value expression. That hasn't changed at all. The only thing to keep in mind there is if you multiply or divide by a negative number, the inequality sign flips. The other thing that hasn't changed is you're still splitting the inequality into two inequalities. Inequalities. Now, we're not just flipping the sign, we're flipping the sign, that's the positive or negative, and the inequality symbol. Then, just like, every, just like before, you're solving both inequalities, and you're using a number line to find your set of answers. And then you're writing using the notation which we just covered. Let's take a look. Here we have our examples, and we're just going to go through. This is going to be our number one. The first step is already complete. The absolute value expression is already isolated on one side. So now we need to do the second thing. I need to split the inequality into two inequalities, flipping the sign and the inequality symbol. So that means I'm going to have absolute value, oh, excuse me, taking out the absolute value as we do that, x minus 8, and here's our original, is greater than 7 x minus 8, I'm going to flip, oh, excuse me, less than 7, I'm going to flip that to greater than, and I'm going to flip the 7 to negative 7. Cool, we've done that part. Solve both inequalities. Okay, we'll add 8 on both sides over here, and that means it's going to be 15. Over here I'm going to add 8, and it's just going to be positive 1. I've solved it. Now, in delta math, 
You can just write this with an or in between, and this will be your answer. But it helps to look at a graph and see what's going on here. X has to be less than 15, and has to be greater than 1. So let's look at a number line. Uh, let's include 1 and 15. You can choose whatever scale you want for your number line. If X is less than 15, it's going to be this part here. Notice it's an open circle because this symbol does not have an or equal to. I need to go backwards because it's less. And then if I'm looking at this one, x is greater than 1, open circle, because again, this doesn't have or equals 2, and it goes over this way. Well, they overlap there. So instead of having this strange looking graph with two arrows, I can just say it's all one group. And if you want, you can even combine these two together, where you can say 1 is less than x is less than 15. That's our first one. Now, let's take a look at that second one. I'm going to move this on over there. I'm going to erase my little marks showing what I've done. Oh, don't want to erase the whole darn thing. Let's take a look at the second one. We need to isolate the absolute value expression first. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So I'm going to get 4x minus 9 is less than or equal to 24. I'm going to divide 4 on both sides. I'm dividing a positive 4 so it doesn't change the inequality symbol. 6. Well now, I've isolated the absolute value expression. I'm going to split it into two parts x minus 9 is less than or equal to 6, x minus 9 is greater than or equal to negative 6. Remember, with this, you have to change the sign of the number and the inequality symbol. They both flipped. Well, now I'm just going to solve them both out. So I'm going to have adding 9 to both sides, x has to be less than or equal to 15. In the second part, adding 9 to both sides, x has to be greater than or equal to 3. If we graph it out, I'm going to involve my 3 and my 15. Oh, it happened that 15 popped up in both of these. Cool, a nice little coincidence there. With this, x is greater than or equal to 3. I know that I need it to be this way. But since it's or equal to, this is a filled in circle, indicating it could be equal to 3. With this part, x is less than or equal to 15. Well, we have less than or equal to, so it's a filled in circle. And it has to be less than, so it goes this way. So this entire area is our solution set. And you can combine these two inequalities, and you could just say 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 15. And this is what you would plug into delta math. So we've seen two examples where we can fill in the number line between two points. This one's going to be a bit different. And it's going to be different because of our inequality symbol right here. That's greater than, and we're going to see just what it happens to do. And I'll show you how to enter it in delta math as well, so you're not confused. Let's take a look. Same steps. First, we're going to isolate. So I'm going to just subtract two from both sides. I'm going to get 42. I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. And I'm going to get 14. All right. I've isolated the absolute value expression. I'm going to split it up. So I'm going to get x plus 2 is greater than 14. That's the original. x plus 2 is less than negative 14. That's the second. I've flipped it. Time to solve it. OK. Well, x is just greater than, subtract 2 from both sides, 12. So x is less than, subtract 2 from both sides, negative 16. And let's see what this looks like on a number line. I got my 12, I got my 16. Well, if x is going to be, 
That was silly. I got my 12, I got my negative 16, 0 is somewhere in the middle, let's say here. You don't need to put it, but it helps sometimes. Let's do this, 0, excuse me, x is less than negative 16. Open circle, because it's less than, not, less than or equal to. Let's see this one in red. And the arrow goes off this way. Let's do this one, x is greater than 12. Open circle, because it's greater than, not greater than or equal to, goes off this one. You'll notice that these two arrows don't overlap. That's perfectly fine. So all you're going to do to write your answer is this is what you plug into delta map. And here's what it'll look like. you got to hit this little or, x less than negative 16. Submit the answer, yes, and we got it right. Yay! <laughs> All right, so you saw those examples. They can get a bit wonky, and especially with the inequality symbols, you might be a bit confused. Remember, delta math can always give you a problem. As an example, you can always look at it. You're also more than welcome to ask me questions, either in the Zoom call, if you're still there, or you can come on back if you happen to have left, or in office hours. Shoot me an email whenever. I'm probably only going to respond during school hours. I might respond around 7.30 at night, but we'll see. But just you sending the email lets me know you need help. And if I get a ton of emails from people saying, what's going on? I know to address it in our next class. Give it a shot, folks. I look forward to hearing from you. Have a good one.